Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I'm taking a look at PNA Forms. Almost every WordPress site needs form functionality, and PNA Forms is an attractive choice. PNA Forms started off as a popular add-on for Elementor, but then a standalone plugin was created, and now version 2 of that plugin, PNA Forms, is being released. Some features of the new version include an updated user interface, enhancements to multi-step forms, easier styling, and a library of pre-designed form templates. In this video, we'll first have a quick tour of PNA Forms and then put it through its paces by creating a front-end post submission form for a custom post type. If you like the video, please subscribe. It helps us spread the word about the channel. Let's start by looking at the PNA website. You can see that it's lightweight. There's only 11 kilobytes of CSS and JS combined for a standard form. And you can see that it has a lot of features and integrations. Surprisingly, there isn't a page on the website that shows all of the features and integrations. However, if we look at the docs, here's some overview information, and here are some of the basic features. You can see it has quite a few form field types all of the ones here and then we can see here that you can create a booking form it has repeater fields a registration and login form builder woocommerce one page checkout woocommerce dynamic pricing submit post and edit post form builder we'll look at front end form submission in our walkthrough a signature field tracking form abandonment captcha you save the forms in the database. There are web hooks. You can do distance calculation, label animation, update user profile, multi-step form, conditional logic calculated fields, PDF generator, and then lots of integrations to different payment processors and email marketing platforms. And then if we look at the prices, we see there's a one site and an unlimited site, annual plan, and a very reasonably priced lifetime plan. Notice though that they do look like they're planning to change the pricing. So if it looks like this is something you're interested in, this is probably a good time to purchase. I have a test site here using the Cadence theme. If we take a look at the plugins, I've got advanced custom fields and custom post type UI which I used to create the custom post type books. And then I've got version two of PNA Forms Pro installed. When you activate PNA Forms, you get this admin menu area here. If we start at the bottom and go up, first you enter your license, then you can disable the form CSS if you want to use the themes, and you can disable verify SSL when validating the license, if there's an SSL problem, for example, if you're on localhost, there are some integration areas where you can enter your keys or IDs for connecting to third-party services, and then an about page where you can access documentation support or leave a review about the free version. You can upload a custom font for a PDF. This area is where your booking form entries are saved. If you're tracking abandonment, they are going to be saved here. This is where your form submissions are saved. You can import form templates and you can add a new form. Here are some of the pre-designed forms they have available for getting started quickly. A blank form, a contact form, a conversational form, a multi-step form, a calculation form, a loan calculator, conditional logic, front end post submission, repeater fields, label animation, inline fields, Stripe subscriptions, and Stripe subscription with plan select. So these are useful to look at how they've implemented some of the features and also as a quick starting place. We're going to use this front end post submission form option here in our walkthrough. But before we do that, let's look at what one of the book records looks like. Okay, let's go in and look at it in the editor. So you can see we have the title and the content area. 
and the featured image, which are standard WordPress features. Then we have a custom taxonomy genres, and we have two advanced custom fields, a URL field, a link to the author's website, and the other is an image field, the author's photo. Okay, so we're going to create a form that allow users to submit a book review like this from the front end of the website. So let's go back to our templates and let's click to use the front end post submission form template. So when we come into the form editor, you can see there are several basic areas. There's this bar across the top. And then there's a widget area or form components on the side. In the middle is the canvas where it's pre-populated some of the standard fields that are used in form submission. So there's a title, the content, the featured image. And then there's a location field, which we aren't going to use. So I'm going to delete that. And then it has here the submit button, and it also has some short codes here that you can use if you want to have a link to edit the post after it's been submitted or to delete it. Okay, so let's look at some of these controls. When you're working on one of the form fields, it switches to the contextual panels here where you have the settings and style options and advanced features. And if you click on the plus sign, it takes you back to the list of elements that you can use. This stack icon is the navigator and you can see the fields that have been added and you can actually move them around in the navigator. This is undo and redo. Clicking here takes you into the settings for the form. So you can change the name and let's go ahead and we'll change it from front end post submission form to front end book submission form. Then these are style options and submit message options for the form. Okay, I'm just gonna save this since we made a change. And then here you can view the form on different device sizes or see it kind of full screen the save button. This opens a preview on another page. And then you have the hot dog menu where you have the form settings, the global settings, form entries, which takes you to the database area, export the template, light mode and dark mode options. So we've looked at form settings. The global settings are similar to the form settings, but they'll be defaults for every form. Then if we look at the form elements, this is where you add a field and we'll be doing that. The submit button, if you were doing a multi-step form, a booking form, check out, preview the data, which will allow the user to preview the data, lost password, form entries. Then you have kind of layout and design options for the page. You can create a section and we'll be using this. You can add text for instructions have an image, include a short code, add a button, an icon, an icon list, or a spacer. And then down here is the form ID, which you can copy if you want to embed the form on another page. Okay, let's go ahead and start with our form. When you hover over or select one of the form fields, this gear icon takes you into the field settings. You can duplicate the field or delete it. Here you can choose the type of field. You can see they have a large number of different field types. You give the field ID and it's a good idea to do that because it'll generate a random one which won't help you later. We're going to need to use the field IDs when we map the fields on the form to the fields in our custom post type. So we want it to make sense. The label it shows on the form, whether you want the form label to show, whether you want inline labels, you can have placeholder text, whether it's required and you want to show the required mark, default values, you can pick one from the database, and then other options. You have a description, a pattern, an invalid message, autocomplete options, the max length, remove this field from a repeater, remove it from the email message, short code for the field, live preview code, 
the icon for a field, the input mask, and conditional logic. Okay, so the title and content, we can see it's already renamed this and pick the field type. But here we have the featured image and it's full width, but you can see the control is just, you know, part of the width. So let's put this in a column. And the way we do that is we add a section. So I'm just going to add a section above the featured image. And then this is the duplicate button. And now we have two columns. Okay, so I'm going to move this into the first one. So there's the featured image there. And now for this one, let's add a new field. And we'll make this an image field also. It's a little bit of lag there. We'll do an image upload field and we'll give it the ID of author's photo and we'll give it the label of author's photo. And then under allowed file types, our tooltip says to give the extension with a comma between them. So I'll do JPG and then PNG. There's the author's photo. Now let's add another section and we'll put this one underneath the first one and we'll duplicate the columns again so on the left now i'm going to add a field this will be the genre the custom taxonomy notice there's a little bit of lag there it's not stopping me from working but it's noticeable so we'll click term select. There's a note here that says this feature will only work on the front end. So we won't see the preview here. Field ID, we're going to say genre selection. Label, we'll say genre. So we'll type genre here and we'll have a select and we won't need a default value. Okay. And now on the other side, let's add a field into this right column. So it will be a URL field and we'll give it an ID of author's website. And we're going to need to have these IDs to use them in a minute. So we want to remember to be meaningful and fill those in. So for the label, I'll put link to author's website. We don't need a default value. Okay. Oh, I see I have a little typo there. So let's go and edit that one. Shouldn't be a capital there. Okay, so we have all our fields in now. Now let's go to the submit button. This is where we wire up, connect the fields on the form to the fields for the custom post type. So I want this to be for books. And now here's for the custom taxonomy. So I'm going to select the custom taxonomy. We can leave this blank. And now we wanna pick our field genre. And this is the form field. Okay, this is the status we want to go in on, so I'm just going to have it be published, but you could have it be pending. Short code is fine, and then the URL is fine, the title and content and featured image are fine. Now we do our custom fields. Oh, here's this leftover from the initial form, so I'm getting rid of that. Okay, and now we pick which type of custom field we have. So it's an ACF fields, and we add our custom fields now. And so this is where you need to remember what you set in the ACF field group when you created the fields. So I know the first one is called authors underscore photo. Then we pick the short code. Here's authors photo. And then we pick the field type. So it's an image. Okay, so that's the first custom field. And now let's add the second custom field. And this is authors website. link to author's website and it says just to use the text one for URL so we're all set for that. So now we have our form wired up. I'm going to click save and we'll add a new page to test it out and we'll give this page a title and we'll add the form block for PNA forms. And that lets us just pick the form here from a list. So I'm going to publish this. Okay. And let's go view the page. 
Okay, and now here's our page to add the book review. So let's add one. One by one by Ruth Ware. And I'll just add some kind of dummy content there. We'll pick featured image and I'll pick the author's photo. And then this is a mystery and we'll add the link to the author's website. Okay, and we'll submit it. Moment of truth says the form was sent successfully. So now let's go look at our book records and see if we got it. Here it is here. Here's the content. Here's the genre. Here's the featured image. Here's the link to the author's website and the author's photo. So that's awesome. All of that is there. Now let's go to the front end to books. Here's the book in the archive. And if we go look at the book single, here's the book single. So our front end submission form worked perfectly. We were able to submit everything easily as desired. So that's awesome. And that's our walkthrough of how to use the front end form submission feature. Now let's have a little discussion and some conclusions. Adding a front end submission form is a pretty common requirement, but it's often a challenge. PNA Forms makes this task easy. For the most part, everything was straightforward, but there were two issues I noticed when doing the walkthrough. First, I noticed when creating the form that sometimes there was a little bit of lag. It didn't stop me from creating the form, but it was noticeable. Second, after creating the form, when clicking to add the images, I noticed I could only pick an image to upload, but I couldn't access the media library if, for example, an image had already been uploaded. So it would be nice to be able to do that as well. There's a lot to like about PNA Forms. I found support to be very polite and helpful. The user interface was clean, and once you learn your way around, it's really easy to create a form. There are sufficient layout and styling options, and there's also a very good list of field types, which I think probably cover most needs. Overall, I liked PNA Forms. It has all the foundational features you would expect, such as conditional logic, calculated fields, and repeater fields. And while it doesn't have as many advanced features as some of the form solutions that have been around for a long time, it does have some nice advanced features. For example, tracking form abandonment, booking forms, accepting payment, the ability to create a PDF, Google Sheets integration, and as we saw, front-end form submission. PNA Forms is very reasonably priced, and I think it's a good option for most use cases. So that's my walkthrough and review of the new version 2 of PNA Forms. There is a text version of the video available on the WebTNG website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. I hope you like the video. Thank you for watching.